Hello friends, this video on biotechnology principles part 7 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us talk about restriction enzymes. So these enzymes are the DNA cutting enzymes found in bacteria. So the most important thing here is the DNA cutting enzymes because first of all we need something which can act as scissors to cut DNA. So how these enzymes act as scissors? They cut DNA at specific sites. Now what do we mean when we say that they cut DNA? So if you remember the structure of DNA, it is nothing but a double stranded structure, a di double stranded structure. So when I say that it needs to be cut at specific sites, so what actually are we cutting? So this is how the double stranded structure looks like and if you look at the structure in even more detail, what is DNA? DNA is nothing but a polynucleotide. It is a polymer which is made up of nucleotide units. So many nucleotides join together form the polynucleotide. So if you see here, this is and one nucleotide consists of a sugar, a base and a phosphate group. So this constitute one nucleotide. So you can see here, this portion is one nucleotide. So again, you have the second nucleotide, the third nucleotide, the fourth nucleotide and all these nucleotides are joined together by the phosphodiester bond between the nucleotide subunits of the nucleic acid. So you can see there is a bond which is formed between the phosphate group of one nucleotide and this sugar of the other nucleotide. So that is the phosphodiester bond. So with this phosphodiester bond, the different nucleotide uh, units are joined together to form a polynucleotide or a nucleic acid and that what forms the structure of the DNA. Now when I say that a scissor is cutting the DNA that means what is that scissor doing? It is basically cleaving or it is basically breaking the phosphodiester bond. So if you actually break the phosphodiester bond what will happen? So but this is the phosphate group of this nucleotide and this is the sugar. So here you have the phosphate bond, phosphodiester bond. So if this bond is broken, what will happen? Your complete chain of new DNA will get broken. So basically this enzyme helps in doing that. It breaks the, it cleaves the nucleotides or it cleaves the phosphodiester bonds between the nucleotide subunits and that is how DNA is being cut. So these restriction enzymes belong to a class of enzymes called nucleases. So nucleases is a bigger class of enzymes and what are nucleases? Let us have a quick look. So, so nuclease, the name itself, ACE always represents an enzyme and nuclease is derived from the nucleic acid. So they help in cleaving the nucleic acid and therefore they are nucleases. Now there are two types of nucleases, one is exonuclease and the other is endonuclease. Now the word exo always means exterior or outside and endo means inside or interior. So exonuclease is any uh, enzyme which removes nucleotides from the ends of DNA. That is from the outer portion or from the exterior side. So what is DNA? In DNA you actually have the see. This sugar phosphate base, this part together form one nucleotide. Again, sugar phosphate and base, this forms another nucleotide. Similarly, here again, you will have sugar phosphate and base. So this would be the third nucleotide. So basically, one one nucleotides all when joined together form a polynucleotide. And this is how each strand of DNA is being formed. Now what does exonuclease does is, so it, this is how it is joined. So different nucleotide units joined together by phosphodiester bond. So there is one type of enzyme which will cut DNA in such a way that it will just cleave the outermost nucleotide. So from the outside, it will just cleave a nucleotide. There also it is cutting the DNA. But since it is cutting from the outside, that is the exterior side, so it is exonuclease. Whereas there is another type of enzyme called endonuclease which removes nucleotides from specific positions within the DNA. So now let us suppose if this is the chain of DNA, these nucleotide units are located inside or within, whereas these nucleotides are located outside. So when you cut 
are born to, from in the within the DNA that they those enzymes are called endonuclease. So these are the two ways by which a DNA can be cut. Either a nucleotide unit is removed from the outer part or from one end of the DNA that is exonuclease or a nucleotide is removed from in between the DNA. So the DNA is cut from in between. So then those kind of enzymes are called endonuclease. So these are the two types of nucleases. Now restriction enzymes can also be exonuclease or endonuclease. Both types of restriction enzymes can exist. Now the question is the restriction enzymes which we are going to talk about here are going to be mostly restriction endonucleases that is those enzymes which cut the DNA at specific location within the molecule. It is not necessary that it will cut it from outside always. Now the question is how do the enzymes know where to cut the DNA? Now as I have mentioned before that First of all, we have to select the desired gene. Then we will have to locate that desired gene on the DNA. Now once that is done, we have to cut that part of DNA which carries that desired gene. So now how will the restriction endonuclease enzyme know that which part of DNA needs to be cut? So how will it recognize? So for that purpose, there exists a recognition sequence that is a sequence why sequence? Because DNA is all about sequence of bases. So there are specific sequence of bases which will indicate or which will tell the enzyme that okay you have to cut it from here. So each restriction endonuclease cuts a DNA at specific sites recognizing a specific sequence of base pairs. So that means every restriction endonuclease enzyme is very specific as far as a recognition site is concerned. So every restriction endonuclease, let us suppose there is one enzyme, restriction endonuclease enzyme say X. So for X there might be a specific sequence. For example, X always looks for a sequence. Say I'm just taking a rough example. Let us suppose the enzyme X always looks for this sequence and whenever he could see this sequence, he just cuts it between G and T. So wherever he will find, he will always keep on looking for this sequence, AGTC. And wherever he finds AGTC, he breaks the bond between G and T. So that is how every restriction endonuclease enzyme works. So, so this sequence of base pairs which tell the restriction endonuclease enzymes to cut the DNA that is called recognition sequence because this sequence of bases actually help the restriction endonuclease to recognize from where to cut the DNA. So that is why they are called recognition sequence. Let us suppose this is the DNA strand. This is how the DNA strand looks like and this is a restriction endonuclease enzyme. Now this restriction endonuclease enzyme would have found its recognition sequence here and that is why it will come here and it will break the sequence or break the DNA from here. So here you can see this restriction endonuclease broke the DNA at this site and therefore it got broken into two parts, one and two. So this is how restriction endonuclease acts as DNA scissors. Now I am very sure that till now it might not be very clear to you that how exactly this cutting happens. So let us take some examples of restriction endonuclease enzyme to understand this concept of recognition sequence further. So first let us take an example of this enzyme BAMHI. Okay. Now the name might be quite uh, weird to you right now. What is this BAMH1? So we will talk about it in the next slide that how these uh, restriction endonuclease enzymes are named because their naming follows a special convention. So we will talk about that in the next slide. So for this enzyme, for example, this particular enzyme has a specific recognition sequence. So it will always look for that particular sequence. So let us let me tell you what is that sequence. So this is the sequence which this enzyme always looks for. So this is from 5 prime end to 3 prime end. Now as by now all of you know that DNA has two strands. So one strand is running from 5 prime 
to 3 prime whereas the other strand is complementary so it is running from 3 prime to 5 prime so that is how the direction of the two strands are so this will always look for this particular sequence now this enzyme will, will keep because this enzyme can act only when it finds this recognition sequence because only when this sequence is found BAM H1 can perform its job and what is, what is its job? Its job is to cut the DNA. Now let us suppose this enzyme found this particular sequence. So this will know so this enzyme will come and stick there because now it knows that its job is to cut. So from where exactly will it cut? It will cut the bond or it will break the bond between G and G here and similarly it will break the bond between G and G here. So what happens when this bond is broken and this bond is broken what happens? These are the two parts into which the entire enzyme is broken. That means not the enzyme, the entire DNA strand is broken. So DNA strand will get broken into two parts. So one part would be G, C, C, T, A, G and the other part would be G, A, T, C, C, G. So this will be one part and this will be the other part. So this is how the DNA will be cut. So this, this is what is the concept of recognition sequence. So each and every enzyme will have a specific recognition sequence. So here what is the recognition sequence? This thing is the recognition sequence because whenever this sequence is present on the DNA strand, BAM H1 will perform its job. So that is one thing. The next thing is every enzyme will have a specific site where it cuts the DNA. For example, in case of BAM H1, it always breaks the bond between G and G. So it will break the bond between G and G here and G and G here on the on both the strands. It will break between the it will break both the strands between the same bases. That is, if in one, one strand it is breaking the bond between G and G, on the other strand also it will break the bond between G and G. So this is the concept of recognition sequence. Now let us take another example of enzyme and the next example is EcoR1. So this is the next <coughs> example of restriction endonuclease. So EcoR1 also has a specific recognition sequence. So let us first look at the recognition sequence of EcoR1. So this is the recognition sequence GAA TTC from 5 prime to 3 prime. Then so therefore from 3 prime to 5 prime it will be CTT AAG. So this is the recognition sequence for EcoRI. And here, where does it break the bond? So it breaks the bond between G and A. So it breaks the bond here. Again, it breaks the bond here. So it is broken into, so the DNA is cut into two parts. So what are the two parts? One part is G, C, T, T, A, A. And the other part is A, A, T, T, C, G. So these are the two parts into which the bond is into which the DNA is being cut. So now here if you look at this picture you can actually see this is one part and this is another part. So this part you can see you just have the one basis. It is like a single stranded part. So here also you can see this portion is single stranded. You just have TTAA. You do not have the complementary basis. Similarly for this one also if you see you just have one basis. The other base pair is not there. So here also you just have AA TT, their complementary base pairs are not present. Now these type of ends are known as sticky ends. Please remember this, this is again very important. Why are they called sticky ends? Because these ends just have one base pair, one single base, base and their complementary base pairs are not there. So they are like, they are going to be very sticky in nature. So whenever they find their complementary bases, they are going to stick there. So that is why these are called sticky ends. So sticky ends are formed when recognition, uh, uh, when the restriction endonuclease enzyme 
cuts a DNA in this very fashion. Now, it is not always necessary that every time a restriction endonuclease enzyme will cut a DNA in such a way that sticky ends are formed. Now, there are two types of ends that can be formed by a restriction endonuclease enzyme. One is a sticky end and the other one is the blunt end. Now, we will talk about sticky end and blunt end in one of the next slides. So, for now, what I'm, try what I'm trying to explain you is that each and every restriction endonuclease enzyme will have a specific RNA, will have a specific recognition sequence. So whenever they found that particular sequence, they will break the bond between a specific nucleo, a specific nitrogenous basis and that is how they will cut the DNA. Now, after the DNA is cut, sticky ends can form or blunt ends can also form. So here both the examples which I have taken that shows that sticky ends are formed because here also you see wherever you have one single strand, I mean some portion is single strand where there are some bases present which do not have their complementary bases, that is they are known as the sticky ends. So this is how restriction endonuclease enzymes work. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.